Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hey everybody, welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Erin Wisebro. And we are so excited that you are joining us today for our live Bible study. So we have some awesome announcements for you before we get into the Word of God. First of all, if you're new here to our live Bible studies, we want to let you know that you can join us live during the weekdays. Those times that you can join us are Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m., and Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Those are all the mountain time zones, so please be sure to do the math so that you can join us live during those weekdays. We always encourage you to join us live if you can so that you can interact with us by asking questions. So just post any questions that you may have as Daniel gets into the teaching today and post them in the comment section below on whatever platform you're watching. And then we dedicate the last 10 to 15 minutes of today's program to answer as many of those questions as we possibly can. And then we also want to take this time to say thank you to all of our friends and partners of Andrew Walmack Ministries and Karis Bible College. There is so much going on here and we can't do it alone. We need the help of our friends and our partners to help support all the amazing things that are going on here. So if you haven't become a partner yet, we encourage you to do so. You can become a part of this worldwide ministry just by giving. So go online to awmi.net slash give to check out all those initiatives, or you can always call our helpline at 719-635-1111. And we also want to let you know that you don't need to do life alone. This is what the body of Christ is for. We need each other and we need each other to stay strong and to stand. So if you have a prayer request or something that you're walking through, please give our phone center a call. They would love to talk to you, to pray with you, to hear any encouraging testimonies of what the Lord's doing in your life. And they are there 24 seven. So give them a call. Again, that helpline number is 719-635-1111. And lastly, I want to let you know that we have an event happening here on our campus. Uh, it started last night and it's going through Saturday, our Truth and Liberty event, uh, coalition conference, excuse me. And so you can watch that at truthandliberty.net slash live or you can tune into our gospeltruth.tv uh, program online and you can watch it there too. It's going to be awesome. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Daniel Bennett, and he is our executive director of academics. I know this is going to be a great word today. Hey, Daniel. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good to see everybody. Um, I'm excited to be sharing with you all today. And I know the Truth and Liberty Conference is going on right now. And so if you want to tune over to that one, <laughs> <laughs> um, but my topic with you today is let God defend you. This is something that Amen. is near and dear to my heart because it radically changed how I went about life and, and I enjoy life much better. Uh, I mean, honestly, even just being in ministry without knowing how to let God defend you, it'll just tear you up. And so mm -hmm. I want to talk about letting God defend you. And so I want to start off by really explaining kind of different types of scenarios where this could happen. Uh, you know, I personally, I used to hate being misunderstood. It was my, it was the thing I hated most in the world was being misunderstood or being lied about, things like that. And, uh, and it, you know, it can drive you crazy, right? I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've been gossiped about or lied about, or people just make judgments about you that aren't accurate. Um, you know, even uh, if they, if they just misjudge your motives, or right? maybe you do something and then you get accused of doing it for the wrong reasons. Uh, there's even an example of this happening to, to David before he was the king. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 28, you know, when Goliath is challenging the armies of Israel, and David says, what will be done for the man who, who defeats him? His older brother says, now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, why did you come down here, and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you've come down to see the battle. So he's accusing him, saying, I know your pride and the insolence of your heart. That was not true. That's a, that's a very severe accusation. And he said that in front of a bunch of people. And David just said, is there not a cause? And then he started talking to other people. He didn't say, well, it's your heart. My heart's pure. Your heart's wrong. But he didn't get into this argument defending himself. He just moved on. Right. And again, that's a major accusation for someone to say, I know your pride. Right? David had righteous anger. 
at Goliath of like, hey, our God's greater than them. Than them. Mm -hmm. And so David was doing this with the best motives, and yet his brother is accusing him of pride and insolence in his heart. So he totally misunderstood him, and yet you don't see David starts, you know, hey, wait, forget Goliath, I want to fight you now. Um, you know, sometimes you get corrected for something that wasn't your fault. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. Or something goes wrong and somebody corrects you, rebukes you, maybe in a kind way, maybe in a harsh way, and you're like, it wasn't even my fault. And, and it can, um, it doesn't feel great to feel like someone's thinking something about you that isn't true. Uh, maybe you did do something wrong, right? Maybe you did mess up, you made a mistake, you made a poor choice, whatever it may be. Uh, but someone's trying to use it to destroy you and so they're trying to attack you because of it instead of um, trying to look at the full picture of who you are and how you could be redeemed and things like that. Uh, sometimes someone will tell a half truth, right? Or someone tells someone where it's kind of like, well, there's some truth to that, but the way you're saying it leaves out some key context or you added some things that weren't accurate, things like that. Uh, you know, what can really hurt is if somebody believes a lie about you without even hearing your side. Right? Especially if it's somebody who knows you, you're friends with, you're like, I thought you, would, I thought you knew me better than that. And they just make a judgment. You know, you hear stuff like this happen all the time. If somebody gets rejected by their friends or something because someone spread a rumor and they're like, you didn't even wait to hear what I had to say about it. You just believed them right off the bat and rejected me. And so um, there's a lot of different things that can happen where you might want to defend yourself. Uh, because really it can be very frustrating. It can be a feeling that may, it can go multiple different ways, but it can make you feel very helpless on the one hand. It can make you angry on the other hand, right? Maybe some people are like, I just want to give up because what's the point? No matter what I do, people believe lies about me or they, do, they misunderstand me. Um, or it could be the other side of, I want to attack. I want to destroy. They hurt me. I'm going to hurt them. And they go into fight mode. Right, you know, people can say, "Oh no, I need to restore my reputation. I need to, def I need to defend myself. People need to know the truth." Right? You may say, I, "I need justice. I need, I need revenge." Right? And so, it can, it can go a lot of different ways. But really, it's because it's an, it's an unpleasant feeling, an unpleasant situation, and we can react in different ways depending on how it hurts us or, or um, sparks frustration or anger or revenge or whatever it may be inside of us. And so, what I learned over the years is that this doesn't work, right? Every single time something went, went bad and I tried to jump in and, and, and fight back um, and whatever, whatever, right? Argue back or try and defend myself or explain, right? I used to try and just, surely if I just explain my side, people will understand and they'll, they'll um, see the full picture. They'll realize that there's misinformation or whatever. And I just tried to defend myself, right? I was like, hey, I'm just gonna tell the truth and tell the truth and tell the truth. And it always made things worse. Now, I'm not saying there's never a place to explain your side or to explain the truth, but when it comes from a place of trying to defend yourself, it just, like, in my experience, it just makes things so much worse. And I'll explain a bit later um, kind of why that happens. It is scriptural that it tends to make things worse if we try to defend ourselves. <clears throat> what really inspired me to change was actually watching Andrew Womack. Not on TV, I'm saying just watching him in, in person, just how he makes decisions, how he handles things. Because Andrew is on a global platform he has all kinds of people lie about him, misrepresent things, take things out of context, twist things, think bad things, all that, and, and he just wouldn't defend himself. And I just saw, you know what, he just, can, he's walking in that peace, he's not worried about it, where, I, where I'd hear people say things about him and I'd be like, if they said that about me, I'd want to defend myself if, if I just explained more content, right? And, and all these things, and I saw he just didn't worry about it. And, and then I saw that over time, he always came out ahead and other people just kind of faded away. Right, where it's like he'd keep getting promoted by God, and other people just, and, and I was like, you know what, that seems to work a lot better, right? It's that, you know, he, he gets to live in peace, and he comes out looking better, because he's letting God do it. He's letting God worry about it for him, where, again, instead of jumping in, right, if you're running a race, instead of jumping in the stands and arguing with the people who are booing you, just keep running your race, you know, the, you know win the race, and, yeah. and that's the best, best, best way. So, again, I love, I love the truth and that's part of what motivated this, right? I hate it when people believe lies. And so I especially hated it when people believed lies about me or maybe just had negative opinions about me. Um, but I realized, you know what, that's God's problem. I'm not gonna try and defend myself anymore. And so I wanna talk a little bit today about how to do that. How do we let God defend us and what happens when we let God defend us, mm -hmm. right? Because first of all, life got so much better when I just said, you know what? 
right? Because you get plenty of opportunities in life. You know, like, I'm not going to defend myself. If someone wants to know more of the story, I can explain um, some details they might not be aware of. But I, I don't, I'm just going to release that. I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to be frustrated. I'm not going to feel like I need to make sure I get justice, that I make sure people know the truth and say, um, God, that's your problem. I'm going to do what you've called me to do, and you can deal with that. You can deal with the other people um, however you see fit. See, and God can defend you so much better than you can defend yourself. He can do things in the hearts of other people and circumstances and situations that you could never make happen on your own. Right? So it's great because you get no stress and better results. Like best of both worlds. So it's, I mean, honestly, you know, it takes way less effort just to say, I'm going to trust you, Lord. And, and I'm just going to keep being faithful, keep being faithful, keep being faithful, and let you reveal the truth. Hmm. So, again, how do we let God defend us? So I got a few different scriptures I want to go over. We talk about, again, we're disciples of Jesus, right? If we're Christians, we're disciples of Jesus. That means we want to be like him. And so how does Jesus go about things? What does Jesus say about um, having enemies or having people come against us? And I want to start with Romans chapter 12. And this is a bit of a longer one. It's 17 through 21. Um, it really sets the stage here. So Romans 12, verse 17, Paul says, Repay no one evil for evil. Right? Repay no one evil for evil. Don't fight back. Don't fight fire with fire. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Right? Strive for peace, not for overcoming the other person and destroying them. Verse 19, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So he's saying, vengeance is mine, it's not yours. You have no right to avenge yourself because it doesn't belong to you. Uh, verse 20, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you'll heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So he's saying, if somebody does something wrong against you, don't try and get revenge, do good, do good to them. Bless them. Right? And so, like I said, we don't have a right to avenge ourselves. God's the one, right? Jesus paid the price for everyone. It's up to God who he pours out judgment on. He poured out his wrath on Jesus already. And so it's, it's not, you don't have a right. So, I mean, in a sense, if you just humble yourself and say, I don't have, I, it's not that I, I shouldn't or that I don't have to avenge myself. It's that you, sh you, uh, you don't have the right to. You're actually going against God if you try to avenge yourself because it, you don't have the authority to do that. Um, it's, it's, not your, it's not your call. So again, God will deal with them. And again, God's desire is not to destroy them. I mean, you look at Paul. Paul was an enemy of the church. And what did God do with him? God dealt with him. He turned him into the apostle Paul, right? He, he saved him. He, he revealed himself to him. And, and so again, we, we want God to deal with this the way that only he knows how. The, the church, when they were being persecuted and martyred by Paul, they had no way of knowing. They couldn't have just strategically said, if we argue him, with him enough, he might become one of us and he might become a leader among Christians for generations. There's no way they could have done that, but look what God did in that situation. Yeah. Um, 1 Peter 5, 7, on a similar note. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Right, and earlier it says it's humbling ourselves. Right, see, it's humility to cast our cares. If somebody comes against you, you have a care, right? It's, okay, I don't like that, that bothers me. I'm gonna cast it on Jesus because he cares for me. That's a sign of humility. You know, defending yourself is actually pride. If you're defending yourself, you're trying to use your own strength to protect your reputation, to protect whatever it may be. Um, and Proverbs 13, verse 10, and I want to do this one in the King James Version. Usually I do New King James. Um, Proverbs 13, 10 says, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Right? Only by pride comes contention. And that's why I was saying earlier, if you try to defend yourself, it makes things worse. Because if you're trying to defend yourself, that's an act of pride. And by pride comes contention. You're not going to get good results if you're stepping into pride. If you're trying to defend yourself and looking out for yourself and protecting your reputation, protecting your ego, protecting your feelings, I feel like I need revenge and so I'm going to give in to my feelings for revenge. Whatever it is, that's pride and that will only lead to contention. That's why it always gets worse if you try to defend yourself. If you jump in the mud to throw mud at the other person, you're just going to get covered in more and more mud yourself. And so, again, if we let God, if we humble ourselves, we can walk in so much more peace. And, and we're letting God step in and resolve this in a, in a way we can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. You know, Matthew 5, verse 38, verses 38 and 39. Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. 
But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. Right, so he's saying if somebody is coming against you, just turn the other cheek, right? Don't, don't engage, don't retaliate. Don't say you slapped me in my cheek, I'm gonna slap you in your cheek. You poked my eye, I'm gonna poke your eye. And so it goes on. The, the reason why he's saying we can do this is a couple verses later. So Matthew 5, verse 43, Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Right. So Jesus is saying, I mean, this is crucial. This right here. If you only remember one thing that I say today, <laughs> it's love your enemies, mm. bless those who curse you. Right. That's the way that Jesus um, is telling us to do it. That's how he did it. Right. You see his example. He never said, oh, you, you crucify me. I'm going to get off this cross and murder all of you. Right. He, he didn't do that. He, he gave his life because he's like, I love you so much. See, if you love your enemies, that's what that's what allows us to walk in this peace and this freedom is because mm -hmm. we step back and say, even though you're attacking me, I want what's best for you. Think about it this way, right? We're all, go everyone's God's children, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're born again or not, God still created you. And so he loves you. He loves everybody. He loves the whole world. So with my children, if one of my children, and, and I'm not saying this ever happens, but it happens a lot, right? If they ever hurt me, if they, if I'm sleeping and they randomly just smack me in the face or jump on my nose or whatever, right? And something like that. If they poke me in the eye, all these things happen. <laughs> if they jump off of a couch and land with on their knees, right in your chest, you know, right? I don't get up and say, I demand vengeance and I want an eye for an eye and you, you punched me. I'm going to punch, right? right? It's ridiculous. If you love somebody, you don't want revenge. Now you do, you do sometimes want boundaries, you want correction, you want, you want what's best for them, which can include, I don't want to allow you to do that anymore. I, mean, I need to correct you, I need to teach you, I need to show you how to function. And so there's that side of things, but see if you love someone, you want what's best for them, you don't want revenge. You don't even necessarily want justice. I don't look at my children and say, I want justice for what my kid. Lord, you're the avenger, I pray that you cause to my children what they just did to me. Like never, never in a million years. Even on the cross, you see Jesus say, Father, forgive them. They know not yeah. what they do. Mm -hmm. You see Stephen saying the same thing. Don't, don't charge this against them. Mm. And so if you truly love the other person, that's where you can walk in that supernatural peace and say, God, I, I'm allowing God to flow into this situation because instead of trying to, to defend myself and say, what happens to me is what's most important. And I'm going to use carnal ways to get revenge for myself, to defend myself. I'm just going to use logic to explain myself. It doesn't always have to be something sinful. It could just be, I'm just going to try and explain myself and explain myself and explain myself. You're making things worse. If you love them, say, I just want, you know, Lord, I, I pray for them. I genuinely pray for them. What, if they're going through something, I don't know why they're doing this, but if they're going through something, I pray for them to be set free from that, for them to walk in victory, for them to know you more, for them to walk in peace. And you start truly praying for them. You're allowing God to enter the situation and do things beyond your own power. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it does not mean, now this is not saying that if somebody's committing a crime against you, you should never have somebody intervene and stop that, or you know, remove yourself from the situation. It's a different topic, right? But Jesus says, if you're being persecuted, flee to another city. If somebody's doing something that's, that's genuinely harming you, he didn't say to stick around and just keep getting beat up and assaulted and, and all these different things. He said, flee to another city. So that's a biblical principle, is to remove yourself from a situation if someone's harming you. So I'm not saying that if somebody is, is verbally, emotionally, physically abusive to you, that you just are supposed to sit around and just let them destroy you. That's not love. If you love them, you don't want them to keep sinning against you, so you remove yourself from that situation. Um, and so that's a different topic, but I wanted to throw that in there. Mm -hmm. um, one interesting situation I want to mention with Paul, this has always fascinated me because it's, it's back to back. So look at 2 Timothy 4, verse 14. So Paul in 2 Timothy is writing a few different things that happened to him. So 2 Timothy 4, 14, he says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. I don't know if we can pull that up on the screen. 2 Timothy 4, 14. Um, I'll give it a moment. Okay, thank you. So Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. That's fascinating. May the Lord repay him according to his works. Jump ahead a couple of verses, 2 Timothy 4, verse 16. He's talking about a different situation. He says, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. Hmm. So in one situation, he's saying, may Alexand Alexander the coppersmith, may the Lord repay him according to what he did. I pray that he reaps what he just sowed. But in the other situation, he says, hey, they all ditched me. May it not be charged against them. 
Right, that's really interesting, because in one he's saying, I hope he gets what he deserves, and the other he's saying, I hope they don't get what they deserve. And so, what, what, what was this, right? In both situations, you see Paul is motivated by love, actually. Because if you look at verse 15, so 2 Timothy 4, 15, it explains what Alexander the coppersmith did. It says, you must beware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. Hmm. So he's saying he's coming against the gospel, and he's trying to make it harder for people to hear the gospel. So I want him to reap what he's sowing so that, he, so that more people can hear the gospel. So he's saying it's because I love everybody that I want that person to get what they deserve, to, to reap what they're sowing because they're, they're holding back the, the gospel, they're, they're hurting the kingdom. But in the other situation, he's saying, like, look, they were cowards. They ran away. They were scared. Um, th they should have had the courage. They should have had the faith to stand with me, but they didn't. I, I hope they get mercy for that. I hope it's not charged against them. Um, so anyway, he wasn't looking for revenge. He's like, that one really made me mad, so I want revenge. It's, no, this is hurting the kingdom. It's hurting people hearing about Jesus. And so in this case, I want him to reap what he's sowing so that he can get out of the picture. Um, so again, uh, he wasn't motivated by revenge. And, and so it's just interesting how you see that. Like, there is a place for vengeance. Um, so anyway, what does, uh, what does it look like when God defends us? And you could go on and on all day. I'll just give a few examples. So one way that God can defend you when you let him step in is supernatural favor. So he can just give you favor with the right people at the right time, and it'll change your whole situation. Right? If you, if you read the book of Esther, you see that Haman wanted to kill Mordecai. But that same night, the king couldn't sleep, right? So this is God intervening, intervene, intervening. Um, <laughs> oh, I couldn't say that. <laughs> intervening. And so, um, so the king couldn't go to sleep and he had them read, he had his servants read him some stories from things that had happened. And they just happened to read the story, just happened, right? So God moved to ha where they read the exact story of where a Mordecai saved the king's life. And so God protected him where instead of being killed, the king threw him a parade. And, and it changed everything. And so there's supernatural favor of God intervening where Mordecai didn't even know that this was going on, but he, God was fighting his battles for him. Mm -hmm. Another way that God can defend you is that he promotes you. And I don't mean necessarily at your job, could mean that, um, but promoting you in status, influence, uh, spiritual promotion, in, whatever it may be. Right? Like I mentioned earlier when David was asking about Goliath and his brother said, I know the pride of your heart, right? The insolence of your heart. What happened? Right? God used, God used that same situation to promote David, where now he became a war hero in the whole country. And so, even though he got accused of having pride and insolence, billions of people refer to David as a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. And so, here's an accusation against his heart. And David could have been like, oh my goodness, what if everybody thinks that I have a bad heart? He didn't fight that battle, and look what happened. God, he has the most celebrated heart in history. And people talk about David's heart more than anybody else's heart, really. Uh, maybe other than God's heart, maybe more, I don't know. Um, and so God promoted him where it's like, the same thing you got accused against, I'm going to show that this is actually like my favorite heart in all the Old Testament, is that you have a heart after my heart. You want me like nobody else is in. And his own brothers, right, they repented, because later on you see that his brothers followed him and acknowledged him as king. And so at some point, his older brother was like, I was a dummy. There's no way that you had a bad heart. Um, I want to follow you because you, you are the chosen one by God. And so one way that God defends you is promoting you in, in the situation. It doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, David became king also, so it was a promotion in that sense. But it could just be in how people see you, how people think about you, opportunities, things like that. Another way that God defends us is by, let, by letting us reap what we sow, right? If somebody comes against you, and you're like, I'm not going to defend myself. I'm just going to keep sowing what's in my heart, right? Instead of getting in the dirt and getting in the pride. And, and so I'm going to try and defend myself with my logic, with my, with my emotions, whatever it is, with my temper. Instead of doing that and just lowering ourselves and getting more in the mud, say, I'm just going to keep sowing what God's doing in my heart. So I'm just going to keep focusing on, on kindness and generosity and love and, and honor and all these different things that I'm going to keep sowing. You're going to start, you're going to keep reaping that. Right? So if somebody's coming against you and you keep sowing good things and reaping them and they keep sowing pride and hatred and all these different things, over time, people at the beginning, they might say, I don't know who's right and who's wrong. Over time, it'll become obvious. Just by letting you reap what you sow and letting the other people reap what they sow, it'll become obvious. I, you know, so many times I've seen this happen where no one, def you know, I don't defend myself or someone doesn't defend themselves in a situation. And over time, people are like, clearly 
we know that that lie was a lie because there's no way that that's what this person was doing because we just see the fruit of their life, right? Or one person who, who um, would like spread negative things about me, you know, for a couple years later, right? So it wasn't even right away. But I was like, I'm just going to keep doing what God's called me to do. And if I lose friends over this, so be it. Um, and uh, they'd come against me. And then it came out like they'd been living this double life and doing all these terrible things. And so people were like, oh, wow, they must have been lying about Daniel. And people can apologize, right? But see, that's one thing too. Sometimes you might lose friends. You might lose relationships. But one of the ways that God defends you is he gives you better friends, right? Sometimes he will restore relationships. Sometimes he'll give you better relationships. Mm -hmm. And so um, letting God defend you is always better. Uh, in Matthew 7, verse 20, Jesus says, Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. See, when we reap what we sow, people around us eventually, at least the wise ones, the ones that we want in our lives, they'll see the fruit of your life and the fruit of their life I don't know exactly what happened, but based on the fruit of your lives, um, I assume, right? One of the best feelings ever is when, you know, someone, someone that you know and knows you, they hear something negative about you and they say, that can't be true. I know them too well. Yeah. You know, that's amazing, right? Because it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. if, if someone lies against you and, and the other person says, like, I didn't know that. Oh, my goodness. They're the worst. Mm -hmm. Like, that hurts. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. But when they actually are like, no, I know them too well. There's no way that they did that. Or if they did, there's more context. Uh, um, I'm not going to get involved in that, or I'm going to wait till I have more details before I make a judgment on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially in ministry, you have this happen a lot where people will reach out to you and say, my husband's like this and this and that, or my wife is like this and this and that. And anybody who's been in ministry for five minutes will typically know I'm only hearing one side of the story. Right. So this may be accurate from your perspective, but there's probably more details because you don't want to just say like, oh, if I ever meet that wife of yours, she's the worst. I'm going to let her have it. Right. It's kind of no. And so again, people don't always see things from the, the full picture. Mm -hmm. And so so it's nice when people have the wisdom to say, I'm going to unless you need to make a judgment call, I'm going to reserve judgment or maybe not ever make judgment because it's none of my business. Um, but I'm going to hold off until I know more details and find things out. So again, it's great when people treat you that way. So it's great to treat other people that way also. Mm -hmm. So again, um, by their fruits, you will know them. The fruit of your life um, will eventually reveal what kind of person you are. And even if you messed up, right? So maybe, maybe you really did make a mistake. But if you're like, but I am repentant and, and I want to change and I want to grow. Then, then keep sowing that and it'll show the fruit. Like, yeah, you made a mistake, but, but we see who you are. You, you know, you're walking in victory, you're walking in peace, you're getting to know God more. Um, you're truly repentant for that mistake that you made, right? And then if somebody just is like, no, I, I, I can't stand you, I'll come against you forever, then uh, that's okay. God can, re one of the ways God protects you is removing people from your life. Sometimes it's adding people to your life. Yes. I mean, think of Paul again. He'd persecute the church, but then when he got born again, and he wanted to join the church, and like no one trusted him. They're like, this is, must be a trick, until Barnabas was like, Hey, actually, this guy's the real deal. He's really, ha he's really born again now. He's changed, and he gave him a chance. But people didn't want to give him a chance at first. But, but Barnabas saw the fruit. So anyway, life can be so much more peaceful when we live this way. We have less stress and better results. We let God defend us. And, and really, it's just about having that humility and saying, like, Lord, this is your business, not mine. It's your job to defend me, to protect me, to defend my reputation. I can't control my reputation. I can't control what people believe about me, right? You can't control what people think about you. So why try and say, Lord, I'm just going to keep being who you called me to be and keep growing every single day. If there's anything I did wrong and I need to repent, I'll do that. I have a whole relationship you teaching on how to apologize, right? So there is place for that. If you did do something wrong, there's, you know, there's a right way to apologize and set things right. Um, one story, I won't go to the scripture there. I think this is in second Samuel, but uh, when David, when David's son Absalom rebelled against him, right, that obviously must have hurt, right? To have your own son betray you and have even some of his closest advisors follow him instead and reject you. And so David was fleeing from Jerusalem with the people who were still loyal to him. And, and Zadok brought the ark with him, with the priests. They, they carried out the ark and David said, no, 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 put the ark back. If God wants me to still be king, he'll make it happen. And if God wants him to be king and he wants me to move on, then that's fine with me. And really it's having that peace of saying, if God wants to restore my, my place, he didn't say I deserve to be king. He did the wrong thing. He's sinning against me. I'm a victim, all this stuff. He said, if God wants to restore this, then I trust that he will. 
And if he, if he thinks that, no, he does want me to move on, then, then I accept that. He said such a piece about that, and God, God made it happen. And so, again, my encouragement to you is let God defend you. Don't give in to pride. Don't try to defend yourself. Uh, don't pursue revenge. Love those, who, love those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. I mean, genuinely, pray blessing over them. Pray peace over them. Pray for them. Want what's best for them. If you love them, then, okay, Lord, in this situation, how do I love them? And there, and there may come a time where it's like, you know what? It's time for me just to forget about them, right? I'm going to move on. Like David with his older brother, he didn't argue. He's kind of like, you know what? I'm going to talk to somebody else. And so sometimes we do just move on and stop worrying about what they're thinking about us. So anyway, let God defend you. Let God give you wisdom. Listen to his voice on Lord. How do you want me to act in this situation? I love them. I want to bless them. I want what's best for them. Um, what do you want me to do right now, though, with the fallout of whatever the situation is? And just, um, I trust you. And, and if you tell me to um, speak up about this, I will. If you tell me to stay silent about that, I will. And so um, anyway, I hope this is helpful. Uh, um, I know this is never a pleasant situation to, to be in, but to me it helps to have a game plan in advance because if something happens, it's kind of like, I know how to handle this. I'm going to love them. I'm going to bless them. And uh, all right, I have no enemies on my side, but if I have enemies who are against me, then, then I know how to handle it. So I hope this is helpful and uh, we can do Q&A now. Amen. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Daniel. That was a blessing. And I have a question for you, if you don't mind. We have sure. great questions. You got you to gotta submit it. I, yeah. So um, <laughs> do you feel like... I don't like, know if you all hear the construction, yeah. but they're building some studio stuff. We're building more studios. Yeah, Yay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so when you brought out how um, David's brother spoke against his heart, mm -hmm. right? And then now we call David like a, a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the enemy sometimes will attack us in our area that's actually a strength and make it feel like a weakness? That's a great point. Um, I, it's more of a point than a question. Okay. <laughs> I, no, I agree. I, I, think, I think you're spot on. Okay. Uh, many times, if, if the enemy can make us insecure about our strengths, mm -hmm. Uh, th then, then we start to self-sabotage ourselves. And so that's a very good point is that, yeah, so, I mean, it is, it is interesting that he got attacked at exactly what his strength was. Mm -hmm. and, and you see that can, that can happen a lot, right? If somebody's humble, it's very easy for someone to accuse them of being proud, mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of times that's why it's aggravating. Usually if it's something you don't care about, then you just uh, don't worry about it. And so sometimes the ones that are most tempting are when someone's accusing you of the exact opposite of what you care about. So if you're motivated by really good motives and someone accuses you of bad motives, you're like, are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Like, what, what are you talking about? You think that about me? Like, again, because my passion was like, I want to be the most humble person ever. And so if somebody thought I was being proud, it would drive me nuts because I was like, that, I wasn't motivated by pride. That wasn't self-promotion. That was an act of humility. I didn't even want to do that, right? And I try and get all these arguments. And so, yeah, I think that that probably is very common is, uh, is that our strengths are attacked because if we think our strength is a weakness, we'll hide it, we'll, we'll bury it in the dirt. And so, uh, yeah. Be afraid of it. Yeah, yeah. wow. That's and, awesome. and, and it gets to us, right? It stirs up more emotions. Mm -hmm. If someone attacks you exactly in the opposite way of what you were, what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So, wow. um, that's, yeah. That's awesome. I like that. Praise God, uh, thank next you. Next time I teach that, I'll steal that. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> okay, so Samaya on Facebook says, if you've defended yourself against a hostile situation and the heat of the moment and the situation becomes worse, how does one go up turning about that circumstance and around and then letting God defend it? Sorry. That's a great question. So basically you're saying it, it's too late in a sense of like, oh, I already, tr I already started. How do I back out and, and smooth over? Right. So um, again, mm -hmm. uh, and when you say hostile, I'm assuming it means like angry or something like that. If it's something involving violence or whatever, again, to me, it's uh, removing yourself from the situation is what I'd recommend. Um, but I would say, again, I, I can't go into the whole teaching on how to apologize, but I'd say, is there anything that I said or did that I shouldn't have? My, my philosophy is if, if they're 99% wrong, but I'm 1% wrong, I, I will focus on the 1%. I'll say, I'll apologize for the 1% where I was wrong. I won't tell them I was only 1% wrong. That just makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> but if in my mind, th they're wrong and I'm wrong, I'm not like, you know what? I apologize. I, uh, I shouldn't have raised my voice when I was frustrated. I apologize. Again, I'd recommend maybe listen to that teaching on how to apologize. But just apologize for the part that you wish you hadn't done, right? For the part you shouldn't have done is like, I apologize for getting upset in the, in the moment and then leave it at that. Don't try to re-explain yourself. Um, and so I would just try to, to smooth it over real quick if necessary. Sometimes you just have to let it go. Sometimes it's like, if I even talk to that person, it's going to come up again. Okay. Sometimes you just say, I'm just going to move on. Um, I wish that I could um, tie up loose ends, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can. And then you say, hey, I, that got out of control. I'm sorry. I was frustrated. I felt like you misunderstood me. Um, I apologize. Or, you know, 
you know, avoid the word that sets them off, right? Avoid pushing a button where it's kind of like, don't say that, I'm so sorry, I'm frustrated that you believe lies about me, right? Now you just started the argument again. Just say, hey, I'm sorry that I, I yelled back, um, I'm sorry, and just move on and, and just kind of start going that direction and say, okay, God, give me wisdom on how to talk in the situation. Um, give me the right opportunity. Timing is crucial. Right? When somebody's frustrated at you or accusing you of something, that's not always the best time to defend yourself. Sometimes, if they have a real relationship with you, they may reach out later, calmer, and say, I just un want to understand what, why you did that. And then you can say, well, actually, this happened and that happened. And just don't, don't just jump in um, and say, I'm going for the whole thing and say, actually, it was your fault and their fault and this person. And I wouldn't, wouldn't go there right off the bat. If somebody reaches out to you, though, God can give you wisdom on just what do I say? I'm not, again, when we're focused on loving them and not on defending ourselves, it totally changes our, pro, our approach. It changes our heart and how we talk about it. If we start to notice like, oh, I started to explain the situation, but now I feel like I'm making excuses or fighting or defending myself. Um, it's like, I need to back down because um, I notice I'm getting riled up again. So I would say, try to just apologize if possible. If not, just say starting right now, um, I'm just gonna move on and, and um, uh, I'm not going to focus on what they did wrong. I'm not going to focus on what they're saying wrong about me, things like that. So, again, it's a big topic. And I encourage you to listen to the How to Apologize uh, relationship you from a few weeks ago. Mm. Um, it's a very good question, though. So, yeah, if you've already started to defend yourself, you can just stop. Mm. And just uh, say, whoop, okay, better late than never. Um, I'm going to let God defend me in this situation. Amen. So. That's awesome. that helps. Yeah, absolutely. And then Sharon on YouTube says, I'm in the process of healing from extreme emotional abuse. How do I get to a place where I can apply Matthew 5, 44? Is it wise to be quiet and let go? Which one is Matthew and 5, Matthew 5, 44? Matthew 5, 44 is love your enemies, bless those right, who curse yeah. you. And so I was like, uh, I wasn't sure if this is the A lot of scriptures one. in there, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so to me, um, talk it through with God, right? So somebody's really harmed you. And just thinking about them is very painful. Again, God's the healer. He doesn't just heal bodies. He heals broken hearts, right? Mm -hmm. That's a real thing that yeah. like sometimes people say, if it's emotional, I just need to get over it or just give it time or whatever else. That's ridiculous. You know, Jesus came back to, to set the captives free, to heal the sick, to, you know, to give sight to the blind and to heal the brokenhearted. It's a real thing that sometimes we need a miracle. We need a touch from God. And so we get that by spending time with God, by letting him minister to us and speak to us. And so, again, sometimes uh, removing yourself from a situation, um, again, to me, it's, okay, God, show me how to love this person, be kind to of them. Like I said, sometimes it's, uh, I just want to spend time with you, Lord. I just want to spend time worshiping you, enjoying you, um, you know, just remembering who I am, who you are, our relationship together. And, and I don't think he'll always lead you to just to think about the other person 24-7. Part, part of the beauty of letting God defend you is that you no longer, your life doesn't revolve around them anymore. That, that's, that's torment to say every waking moment, all I can do is think about this other person. To me, it's like, Lord, I love them. Show me ways to love them. I bless them. I want what's best for them. If there's anything they're going through, I just pray for peace and wisdom for them to hear your voice more clearly in the situation. If there's anything where I'm misunderstanding them, I pray for you to reveal to me any lies I believe about them. And then move on, right? Two minute prayer. Don't think about them again. Move on. I mean, it's, it's amazing the peace and the joy that you can have when you're like, I'm enjoying life with God. Oh yeah, that person hates me. Oh well, right? It's, it's, it's really, I mean, even in, even in the world, people say sometimes like the best revenge is, is a successful life. I'm not pushing revenge, but, but the sentiment behind that is, just go enjoy your life, go enjoy life with God. And if you have an opportunity to bless them, to love them, to forgive them, go for it. And you can say, Lord, I, may, I commit to forgiving them. I don't feel that yet. But, but forgiveness is a decision. So you can say, I make the decision to forgive them. And whenever I think of the pain they cause me or whatever it may be, um, help me walk that out every single time. But again, true freedom is when you don't feel tormented by thinking about it nonstop and you can truly move on with God. And, uh, and again, if God restores a relationship, great. And if, and if God's protecting you from that relationship, great, right? Again, like I said with Paul, one time mercy, the other time I, may they reap what they're sowing because they're hindering the, the, the gospel. So um, talk it through with God, let God give you wisdom on this. But yeah, when I say, when Jesus says, bless those who curse you, you know, um, love your enemies, he didn't say you have to think about them nonstop every single waking moment or it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. To me, it's, I bless, like, I bless them, I love them. And I'm never gonna think about them again. 
I love them so much, I'm going to stop letting their memory um, hold me back in life. So again, I know, I know there's very sensitive situations like this where people can be going through a lot of, of major trauma for, from relationships. And so again, don't forget that Jesus is the healer. Don't, don't dismiss it and say, I just need logic to set me free. You need Jesus to set you free. Sometimes you don't need more information. You just need that relationship and intimacy with God. Many times it's in worship that we're, we're pouring out our hearts to God and that gives God access to set us free from things. And so um, worship is huge. Just enjoying God, enjoying life, uh, letting him speak to you. Um, he has amazing things to say to you. Like He really, really likes us. And so, um, yeah, spend time with him. And uh, I'm, I think I'm just repeating myself at this point. Amen. No, that's <laughs> yeah. really awesome. Uh, Vanessa on YouTube says, I have a client who asked me to lend her money. I acted in God's words to help those in need, but she literally ran away with the money. When people cheat me, what should I do? How can I let God defend me in this situation? Yeah, that's good. And so first of all, I'd mention, um, even though he t Jesus talks about like, right, giving to the poor, things like that, lending without expecting anything in return. You know, if people can use it. I had one person tell me once, like I lent them money, and then I said, hey, do you have that, um, do you have that money? It was very little, it was like $4 or something, but I was in high school and, and we were at a, at a fast food restaurant and I was like, oh yeah, last time I give you money, can I have it back now so I can buy something? Mm -hmm. And he said, Jesus said, never, never expect someone to return money. And I was like, that, that's, for, that's between me and him, that's not, you can't use that against me. Um, and so don't, don't uh, allow yourself to be guilt tripped because um, because some people will try to manipulate and deceive and things like that. So I'd recommend only lend it if you feel peace in your heart that you're being led to do that. We're not, we're supposed to be spirit led, not need led, not guilt led. And so, so to me, first of all is um, if you are being spirit led, then you say it's a gift, right? So if they give it back, great. If they don't give it back, great, because I, I have peace that God wanted me to do this and whether or not they give it back is, is between them and God. But if you're giving it for other reasons, because again, if you think about it, money is just one thing. Um, what about your time? What about your house? What about your family? What about your, your thoughts? You know, if, you, if you're not, basically it's, it's, we need to balance this with being a good steward. We need to look at everything Jesus said in scripture. And we're supposed to be good stewards. And so is it good stewardship if every single time someone says, hey, I want three hours of your time, you're like, okay. Hey, I want 10 hours of your time, okay. Hey, I want, you know, to raise your children for you, okay. Hey, I want all your money, okay. That's not what Jesus is talking about. Again, if somebody's coming against us and trying to attack us, there's a place for, okay, I'm, I'm not going to fight back and resist in that sense, but I'm also going to be a good steward. Like I said, flee. He didn't just say stick around and let them kill every single one of you. He said flee to another city. Of, of, remove yourself from situations where people are trying to harm you. Um, but there is a time where it's like, no, I'm just going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to accept this harm because I love you. So to me, stewardship's part of it. But again, to get to your actual question here is how do you handle this is uh, forgive them. Right? Or if it's something major where somebody's scammed you or something like that, there is a place for um, going, to, going to a mediator, right? It says like, you know, if you can, you avoid going to the law, you go to somebody in the church or something like that and say, hey, we need a mediator because um, we haven't resolved this. You know, I went to them personally and, and we couldn't resolve this. And so now I need to bring in another party to resolve this. Um, but again, if it's something that you can manage to live without, then sometimes you just say, I'm just gonna forgive them, but, um, maybe you have that boundary and say, I'm not going to be in relationship with them anymore. Right. I mean, to me, sometimes I, th I can't remember what it was. I don't remember if this was me or a friend, but somebody once like just kind of, uh, stole, so to speak, they wouldn't call it stealing, but they just took off with like $500 or something like that. Um, and I, I remember thinking $500 is a small price to pay to figure out that they aren't someone I want to be a friend with. Right. Or it's like, okay, I, um, I forgive them, I love them, but I'm so glad they exposed themselves. It only cost $500. If I'd let them keep <laughs> working their way into my life, it could have cost me 20,000. It could have cost me five years of my life. It could have cost me who knows what. I was like, that's fairly cheap to, to remove, to, to realize that you need better boundaries with somebody. So it's always tricky. These very specific situations are tricky to give a, a, a great answer because I don't know so many of the details. Um, but I hope that helps. So again, there's always just forgiveness. But in general, though, we're called to be good stewards, not just to let people just abuse us nonstop. And um, we're supposed to be good stewards. I mean, imagine if somebody went up to Andrew and said, I want all of your time and all of your ministry. Right? It'd be terrible stewardship if, G if, if Andrew said, well, turn the other cheek. You can drive it to the ground, right? Yeah. That's not what Jesus is telling us to do. So 
I, I hope that helps. Um, yeah. I don't know if we have time for one more. Or if we probably need to yeah, we have time. Uh, Whatever you I'll, prefer. Get, I'll do a quick one. You want to do a quick one? Okay. Yeah, yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine on Facebook says, what about when we defend a weaker brother or sister? Mm -hmm. um, so, and I can think of so many scenarios. I could see it going many different ways. So to me, that, that is different because if you're stepping in motivated by love for somebody else, sometimes there is place to speak up for somebody else. Mm -hmm. However, I've also seen that go poorly. I've seen people try to defend me where I'm like, oh, I'm just at peace, I'm not gonna defend myself, and someone jumps in and tries to defend me and they make it way worse. And it's like, if you just, please don't say anything. I, mm -hmm. I've got this covered, I'm okay. I know that they're spreading that lie, I'm, I'm okay with it. And so, to me it depends on if you're being spirit-led, if you feel there's a, a good opportunity where you genuinely can use influence to, uh, to set the record straight, right? If you know somebody, and, and the, the third party trusts you, you can sometimes be a mediator. Uh, but I'd say use a lot of wisdom in that because I can see, I, I've seen it go well and I've seen it go very badly. If you just jump in, now you're just, you jumped in the mud for them and now you're slinging mud back and forth and that's equally messed up because now you're just causing all these problems. Um, but if there's a, a tactful, wise way to go about it, um, the right timing, the right place, the right setting, then sometimes that can be valuable. And again, and I'm talking here more about like right lies gossip things like that um, if somebody right if somebody's attacking a younger friend physically or something then yes jump in and help remove them from the situation sometimes people don't have the physical strength or the emotional strength to remove themselves from a harmful situation and then we definitely should jump in can i help remove them from that situation but i'm talking more about defending ourselves as, as far as people believing bad things about us and stuff like that mm -hmm. again so you know, all these things, you could go in a wide variety of different directions with these topics, but I hope that helps. And again, again, it's a good heart. And again, I pray for both people involved to have wisdom. And Lord, is there anything I can do or should do? And sometimes it's like, nope. Other times it's, yeah, step in and do this or, hey, um, find a way. But the last thing you want to do is just make it way worse. And now instead of two people in a dispute, now there's 18 people in a dispute and they're all angry at each other because they're all trying to be the good, the good guy and they're making it worse for everybody. So. Um, again, uh, avoid pride, uh, avoid even defending someone else's pride. It should be about loving the other person. So, sorry, we went a little bit over, so I'll, I'll wrap up. <laughs> oh, no, that was awesome. Thank you so much, yeah, Daniel. Thank you. thank you all. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. And again, remember that you can join our conference right now, Truth and Liberty dot net slash live right okay no clue. yeah <laughs> so that's a great conference you don't want to miss it and then we'll be back for a live bible study on monday at 10 a.m thanks everybody have a great weekend yeah, bye <laughs> i want to let you know that we had a groundbreaking for our student housing in Karis bible college on may the 11th you can go to our website and find video of that but we are now beginning to build student housing and we have a partnership entitled Foundation Builders that is just specifically dedicated towards building out our facilities here at Karis Bible College. I would appreciate it if you would pray about it and join with me in helping train people to be soldiers in this fight, to go out and help take our nation back and bring people into the kingdom of God. I guarantee you it'll be money well invested so you can check it out, our Foundation Builders for Student Housing here at Karis Bible College. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.